Hi, today I'm gonna to explain how the DNA replication works. So, the thing one, as the picture shows, is the DNA strand, and it's formed by many molecules called nucleotides, which are made of three components. One is pentose sugar, phosphate group, and nitrogenous base. And the bases, there are four bases, which are A, G, T, and C. And A and G are together best, and T and C are together. And the groups have different size as well. So um, the picture I drew here is the structure of nucleotides. And the hydrogen bonds between them is also different. As a picture I drew here, C and G had three hydrogen bonds, and A and T had two hydrogen bonds. And as, as the picture showed here, this is an anti parallel which this is 5 to 3 and this is 5 to 3. They are anti parallel And how do the DNA strand connect together? The molecule of sugar phosphate backbone forms a structure of nuclear acid and is composed by alternate sugar and phosphate group. The purpose of the phosphate backbone is to join the nucleotide in a DNA sequence. So in addition to that, DNA is a double helix strand. Therefore, the double hel helix shape is formed by two linear phosphate backbones, two. That two is together to the heli helical shape, like this, just like bigger. And so for thing two, so it's time for DNA to separate. And this time period, the helix is also known as the replication fork. We come to help separate the nuclear acid to the component strands. So the DNA is no longer in helical shape. By doing so, helicase need to use energy from ATP hydrolysis. Basically, the helicase enzyme will unzip the DNA strand to prepare for the replication. So the picture I drew here is before, which is a helical shape, and after, they are separated. So for thing three, after DNA is unzipped, the DNA is beginning to replicate. And the replication process is called semi-conservative, which each original strand build on the new strand of DNA. As a picture, the replication process must occur in five to three directions. Due to that, enzyme only works in this direction. And also, RNA primers take out the important role of, of the DNA replication process. Um, and our RNA primers but how the RNA primers made is made by RNA primers at this time begin to synthesize the RNA primer. And RNA primers can attract RNA nucleotides and bind to the DNA nucleus of three to five strands. So the scene four is a DNA polymer three attached from three at the end of RNA primer and A to D ATPs from five to three directions. It adds DNA nucleotide to RNA primer and then continuously adds DNA nucleotide into it, which is a complement to the parental DNA template strand. It's important. It's comp complementary to a parental DNA template strand. And for last one. The lagging strand will be more complex. The DNA polymer 3 starts to replicate, as I explained earlier, by attracting three ends of RNA primers and adding DATP in a 5 to 3 direction. And after this process, DNA polymer 1 will remove RNA primer and replace DNA by adding DATPs. The new strand of DNA, which is a gap, gap between two RNA primers, is called Okazaki fragment. The new fragment will now form far away from replication fork, which is the helicase. And furthermore, the DNA ligase is the enzyme that joins the gap together between DNA polymers 1, which already takes away the RNA primer, so there will be a gap between them. So um, the DNA needs to use the DNA ligase to connect them. And finally, now that a new double helix is considered with one new and old chain, and that's called semi-conservative replication. So this is the end of the DNA replication process. Thank you.